We've just got a brand new integration, and this integration works with event-driven Ansible. Now, everyone knows event-driven Ansible, we're able to glue things together, we're able to take alerts and automate remediation, we're able to bring in self-healing, we're able to you know, work with AI and AI ops, because event-driven Ansible connects these tools together. So our new integration is with Splunk. And obviously Splunk, when we're talking about event driven Ansible, we always talk about this, you know, we need a source plugin or we need a source with intelligent events, intelligent data for events. And, and Splunk is a perfect fit, right? So I'm gonna show you this in action and let's dive straight to it. So I have my automation platform, right? I've got my uh, controller component where we trigger our automation and we have event driven. Now with event driven, what we're going to do today is we're going to be using the event streams feature. So event streams, what does this allow us to do? Event streams is a way that we can actually provide a single endpoint for webhooks. But not only that, it allows us to drive authenticated webhooks. So this means that we can have, um, you know, secure authentication from, from an event to automation. So apart from security and having a single uh, point for our, our webhooks, this also introduces uh, simplified routing. So what do I mean by simplified routing? Well, imagine having a endpoint where you're delivering webhooks and you're delivering multiple notifications, right? Um, you're delivering all these notifications. With simplified routing, it means that we could have a whole number of rule books running behind this. And with event, event streams, we're able to route the appropriate payload to the appropriate rule book. I've got my Splunk uh, event stream running. We have authentication, so we're, we're expecting authentication whenever something happens from Splunk. You can see that we've had quite a few events take place. So what's really cool about this is if we dive into the event stream, we can see the endpoint that we need to go and configure everything to, but we can also you know, disable forwarding of events. So when we disable the forwarding, we're actually disabling the simplified routing. So we've just seen now that a, an event has actually taken place and we've received a payload. So we can actually go and see, oh, this payload has X, Y, and Z. This is what the JSON looks like. And we have something to work with. So we're going to go and re-enable that to make sure that we are now going to be forwarding every payload that comes through to our appropriate rule books. Now, this example is obviously very, very straightforward. And I'll, I'll show you the, the Splunk component of it shortly. But... We only have one rulebook that's working behind this event stream. So if we go into the uh, rulebook activations, we can see that this one is running. We can see how many fire counts we've had. So how many times this is actually activated. We have one rule, okay? Um, and this is, this is basically tied into that event stream. Great, so let's go and have a look at what we're monitoring. So we have a look at Splunk. We've seen our application. Let's have a look at Splunk. We've gone and we've now connected and we're monitoring this application. So the first thing I want to point out is the fact that we have now the event-driven Ansible add-on, right? So we can go into this and we can configure this. We could configure a webhook. We can configure export to Kafka. So if you're going to be scaling, you could be using a messaging queue like Kafka and obviously event-driven Ansible listens to that. Otherwise, we could use the webhook because that's an easy way to get going, right? So if you have a look here, the configuration, you can see the payload. That's the webhook for the event stream that we had created. We have done some basic authentication, etc., and now this is all connected. So when we're now sending events to, to our event stream, it has the authentication, and we will then receive the payload of, hey, what's going on? This is the payload. So let's go and see what are we actually monitoring for. So if I go and I dive into this, we're going to see that application. Uh, we've, we're monitoring that application. What are we listening to? We're listening to the key services, right? So the visiting service, the customer service, and obviously the API, API gateway. Outside of that, we also have KPIs, right? So we have metrics. So this is why Splunk is such a good integration because we can get so much data out of Splunk. This is a real um, information rich integration, right? So we could use all of this as event sources ultimately um, to, to EDA. So we could act on all of these types of criteria. So we've gone and simulated a failure. I've gone and shut down the API container. So now we're gonna wait for the metrics to change and for you know Splunk to reach the KPI that it has to go and notify of this failure, this type of event. And we can see how EDA is gonna step in. Okay, now we can see that our application is starting to fail. Okay, so now we've seen 
that our fire count just went up, which means we received an event that matched our conditions and we've had to trigger something. So let's go have a look at our jobs. Uh, we can see that we are busy running some kind of some kind of job, right? We can see it's a workflow job. So let's wait for this to complete. Our remediation or our playbooks have now been finished. We can see that we have success. So let's go have a look at the rule audit, right? Because we want to see what's what happened. So if I go and have a look at the rule audit, I can see that there we go. We have an API gateway failure that was detected. That was the event that we have got from our rule book. And if we go into it, we can get a little bit more information. So looking at the event itself, uh, we can see the time that's come in um, and we can actually have a look at the payload. So this is the payload that was delivered when this event took place um, from Splunk. So we can see here we have, for example, you know, uh, critical failures, etc. Um, we got all of this information that's come through the payload. Now we can use any of this information in our automation once we've received that payload because with controller and with EDA, you know, we can gather data from from the payload and actually use it in our in our automation. And we're going to show this, right? So if I have a look now at the action, so that event took place, and this was the appropriate action that was triggered. So we can see a workflow is triggered. So let's go have a look at the workflow. So here's the workflow. We can see we, it's a very basic workflow, right? It's only um, basically one template, but we could build onto this. We could introduce multiple steps if it was needed. But let's go have a look at our template itself. So we can see we got the payload and it triggered this, uh, this template. We've gone ahead and we restart that, that container that uh, we simulated a failure for. Um, and then we went and we double checked to see that it's still running. Um, and here's the thing, right? Remember I told you that we could get information out of those payloads and use them. Well, we also wanted to go back and update Splunk because you know when Splunk has an issue, it creates an episode and we wanna be able to go and update that episode. So let's go have a look at what we did here. We were able to take that payload and ultimately I could go and have a look at the actual episode content that was part of that payload. So if I go and say, okay, let me have a look at this um, information. This is the episode ID, right? So this is the ID that gets generated and is handed off from that payload from Splunk. And we're able to extract that out of the payload and we can now then go and use it. So I can use this, for example, to do an API request back to Splunk to update it. So inside of Splunk, let's just refresh this. Uh, to see if things are getting better now. And then we can go and have a look. So we can see immediately services are coming back online, things are going back green. So we've restored the application, our application is working again. Um, and if we go and we have a look now at our episodes, we can go and search for that episode that we were able to pull out of that payload and see, you know, were we able to go and actually update it? So I'm going to go and add this. Let's go and search specifically for that. We can see here's the group um, of this type of, of event. If we go into it, we can see the status is resolved. So we were able to update that status once we've actually gone and fixed it. So let's go and have a look at the comments because we would have added comments. Um, and here we go. We can see the comments. So obviously we've done this a few times. So we have a couple of comments, but you can see that, you know, we've added things like we've investigated this issue. Uh, with Ansible, we've provided the multiple job outputs. So we can say, if you wanted to see what we did to remediate it or which you know playbooks ran, here's the output so that we can go and navigate to that. In the same time, we, we timed how long it took to remediate. So in this particular instance, it took me two seconds, but you can see in the past, I've had some that were eight seconds, some were three seconds. This is how quickly it took to restore service, right? And um, at the same time, we can see we've added that, okay, that check of is the container back running? Yes, it is. Cool. Then we're going to add that as a comment as well. So we've been able to have a full life cycle here. We've had our application, something failed, it told event driven Ansible, event driven Ansible then triggered some kind of remediation. And that remediation ultimately updated Splunk to say, everything's cool, everything's working, we've resolved the issue. And here's a bit of detail in terms of what we've done so that our engineers can actually go and have a look if they need to. This is why this integration is so important because there's so many use cases that we could apply Splunk and Event Driven Ansible and really give us um, a full life cycle uh, automation in our organization and allows us to keep our, you know, our tools running, our, our configurations, our systems, everything 
in uh, perfect working order. This is why these two are really built for each other.